Today we're gonna dive deep into everything that we need to know about the patch tool in Photoshop. Right from what is the patch tool and how to use it to some really interesting techniques that you wouldn't know if you didn't know. We have got a ton of examples to illustrate each and every technique. It's gonna be a fun tutorial, so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in this video, make sure to check the links in the description in case you want to download them and follow along. Alright, so first of all, let's understand what is the patch tool. Well, a patch tool is a tool that allows you to remove and replace stuff. That's all there is. Patch tool is used to remove and replace stuff. There's one more use, we'll discuss that later, but the basic use in which patch tool is often used is for removing and replacing stuff. Then you might ask, there is clone stamp as well, there is healing brush as well. But patch tool style is a little different. Let me illustrate. So for example, in this image, have a look at this. There are a lot of sheep, right? But there's this one which is a little distracting. I don't know if that's distracting to you, but let's for a second, let's uh, assume that it is distracting. So we will go ahead and choose the patch tool right here. Right click if you cannot see him. The spot healing, healing, it's on the same group. So there is this patch tool, select that. And all you have to do, you can make a copy of the background layer, but I'm just illustrating. Make a selection around it, okay. Stay away from the wire, all right. Now we need to remove and replace this. First of all, determine. What do you need to remove and replace? Then make a selection around that area. On the top, make sure patch is normal. We're gonna discuss content aware later. Make sure it is normal. Make sure it is source. I'll tell you why in a while. All right, so make sure transparency is checked off. We don't need to use any pattern. Diffusion, five is the standard number. So all you have to do, drag it. See, it's showing us the preview of what that area will be replaced with. So choose an area which fits the best into this area instead of that sheep. So I think line it up properly and then release it. And done. It pretty much does the job. And once you're done, press Control or Command D. And there you go. So this is the after. And if you want to see the before, since we have done this on the background layer, we would have to go to history. So Windows and then there is history. So let's go to open. So this was the before, this is the after. So that was the basic and fundamental use of the patch tool. Now let us understand the options which are at the top. Okay, so let's go back all the way to open and let's minimize the history panel. And then with the patch tool, let's do the same. And this time let's try another sheep. So we'll just zoom in and let's try this one. Okay, so first of all, let us understand source and destination. So you can select this sheep, okay. So right now, source is selected, which means that I'm gonna determine, or you're gonna determine, the source from which the replacement is being done. So you will determine the source for this particular area that you have selected, okay? So if I move in, I determine that from this source, I wanna take in the reference and place this area with that particular area, whichever source have you selected. So I will select this source and I'll just release it. So I'm selecting what? the source. Now let's go back, let's choose destination. Let's click on destination. This time I will determine the destination for this shape. So if I want a duplicate of this, I'll just place it right there. Press Control or Command D, done. But that's not how it is used. This time we select the area that we want to replace this area with and then boom. Control or Command D. What did we do? We determined the destination of the area that we selected. So in this case, when we have the destination selected, we select it and we determine the destination of it. We don't determine the source. In the previous case, when the source was selected, we select this and we determine the source from which to take a reference. In the second case, we determine the destination of the selected area. In the first case, we determine the source of the selected area. Make sense? Now I want you to have a look at this. These are standard selection options. So this is the normal one, new selection. So I'll just go ahead and make a selection as simple as that. And if you want to subtract something from this selection, you might have to use this one because if you hover over it, see what it does, subtract from selection. It actually tells you whenever you don't understand a tool in Photoshop, just hover over it, it will tell you what it does. 
okay so if you select subtract from selection it actually helps you subtracting from that particular selection then there is add to selection so if you select that it adds to the selection whoops i didn't mean to do that so select add to the selection and then it adds to the selection now this is intersection so if you hover over it it will say that it intersects with the selection so if you select that and make a selection like this it will only make a selection of the intersection got that so basic selection tools and you don't have to use and click in all of them all you have to do if you want to add to the selection simply hold the shift key and then just make it see the cursor changes to the patch tool with a plus if you want to subtract from the selection hold the alt key or the option key and then see the cursor changes to the patch tool icon with the minus and then you can just subtract from the selection and intersect is something which you won't be using so very often all right so that was about the selection let's move to example number two and in this example we're going to cover one of the most important concepts that you need to know about the patch tool for example in this example if we zoom in have a look at this bush this is kind of distracting and we need to remove that. We will do that using the patch tool. Let's go ahead and select the patch tool. Now when using the patch tool, you have to keep that in mind that patch tool does a great job when it comes to replacing isolated stuff. If you try to replace attached things, it will smear. So you should avoid that. And we will cover this in other examples. All right. So let's go ahead and make a selection out of it just like that if you want let's select this as well because they are attached and stay away from that pole right over there and once you have made this just drag it and place it at a place where things line up now this is the most important concept always place it and take a source from a place where things line up. Make sure that things are lining up pretty well. So if I place it here, it's not lining up very properly. If I place it here, yeah, it is good, but still, okay, we're gonna work on that later. Let's work on it one by one. So let's place it at a place where it lines up the best. Okay, so this is pretty good, not great. So we're gonna place it here. Just one line is out of alignment. Everything else is in place. So let's try placing it over here. Let's take a little bit to the right and just release it. Let's see what it does. It did a pretty good job, but it messed up around here. No problem. We can work on it again. All right. So one of the other things which you can do, you can work on a copy of the background layer in case you feel that you want that backup. All right. So uh, here things are not quite working. So you can make a selection around here and work on this one. Just like that and here the things won't be working so you need to work it out it's it's kind of a thing that you need to work on again and again then you need to work on this and it's gonna be a little difficult but make sure that things are lining up here as well it's all good but you just have to select this particular area and probably take a sample from over here make sure things are lining up control or command D and you're done here as well, do the same thing, make a selection of this. Let's make a middle ground. It's not very perfect or aligned. Just go ahead. Or these areas where the patch tool doesn't work, you can use the basic selection tool. So use any selection tool like the lasso tool and just, just make a selection of this area. Press Control or Command J. We're going to put it on its own layer. So as you can see, this is on its own layer. We're going to move it and place it around here. And then press Control or Command T right click on it and go to distort and inside of distort you can just line that up properly just like that you can match it with this one and you get the idea and hit enter once you're done now we would have spent a little more time matching this and then click on the mask button take the brush and soften the edges by painting them with black again what is the concept of mask black conceals white reveals any area that we paint black that area doesn't show up so if we select the mask and then take the brush make sure the foreground color is black by pressing x to toggle between the foreground and the background and then just erase the edges like this and it did a pretty good job have a look at this you're done so at times when things are not lining up use the basic simple selections. Now let's talk about one of the most important and often ignored features of the patch tool and that is the content aware patch. 
and we will learn how to customize that as well. All right, so select the patch tool and have a look at this example. There is this man which is kind of distracting this image. So we need to remove that. So first of all, let's make a copy of the background layer. This is something which you can do to be on the safer side. And if you want reference or if you want to use the masks, this is masks. This is going to be very useful. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of the background layer. And then select the patch tool. And this time, instead of normal, let's click on the drop down menu and select content aware. Okay. Now, one of the greatest features of the content aware is that it allows you to sample all layers, which means that you can work on a blank layer. What does that mean? Well, you can create a blank layer. And if you want to remove something, for example, if you want to remove this, you can just remove it in a blank layer and on this blank layer just the removed area will exist so this area has its own layer isn't that interesting i can turn it off and on anytime i can use masks on it masks on it what's happening with me today so that's the advantage however if you had selected normal it will not work on a blank layer so let's go ahead and delete this and create new blank layer and if you try to do that with the normal selected, it just won't work. It says could not use the patch tool because the selected area is empty. So content aware gives you the option of working on a new blank layer. So that's the one hash one advantage. The second advantage is if you choose the content aware and let's try to remove it. And we will work on the same layer because we will have to tweak in the normal one as well. So let's line it up. And it did a pretty good job, but you can modify this. How? Have a look at these two, structure and color. You can play with these things. So you can just play with different values of structures and colors and see which one works best for you. I think for me, structure two works best and color, let's increase it to 10. Nope, probably nine or eight, the way it was before. I'm happy with eight. Press Ctrl or Command D and have a look at this. This isn't perfect, but we can work in the normal again. And that's why normal is also useful because it sometimes does the perfect job. Most of the times does the perfect job as compared to the content aware. And then you can just sample in different areas, trying to merge these things in. Again, take a sample, try to merge them and you get the idea this area has a line on it so we'll select that and take a sample from this and just to work on it on our way into perfection so there you go that's how you do it now we didn't do a perfect job but you got the idea of how we can go about it so we can just make a whole selection of this and probably try to replace it with this and that does a wonderful job you can just remove this area and there we go so have a look before after before after so that's the content aware patch. Now let's talk about some practical uses of the destination option inside of patch tool. Have a look at this image. If you think the birds are not enough, here's what to do. Press Ctrl or Command J first. Make a copy of the background layer to be on the safer side and having a look at the before and after. Okay, so select the patch tool and this time choose destination. So if you want to populate the sky, just select this particular bird and Select it and move it probably here. Control or Command D. So we have more birds now. Select this one and move it there. Control or Command D. Isn't that wonderful? Have a look at the before and after. Before, after, before, after. Two extra birds over there. If you want some extra, probably let's select this one and place it over here. Control or Command D. It automatically tries to match with the background. Control or Command D and you're done before, after. So that's some practical use of destination. You might have seen skies with very less hot air balloons. If you want to populate them, you can use this technique. If you want to populate birds or probably stars, I don't know. You can use this too. Very interesting one. In this example, we will learn a very important selection tip. If you want to draw straight lines, you can do that as well. For example, this time I want to replace this windmill. So instead of doing something like this and not being very accurate, Here's what we can do. While you're making the selection, you can hold the Alt or Option and just make a selection like that. It transforms the tool to act like the polygonal lasso tool. So you can make straight lines like that. And it's very easy, much easier this way. And very easily select this. And once you're done, once you're close to the start, just release the Alt and you're pretty much done. Press Ctrl or Command D. So we wanted to replace this. So hold the Alt or Option, click 
click, click, click. Very easy, right? You don't have to draw anything. But when things are straight, please use this technique. So let's select this. Now let's, okay, that's done. Now we have selected a little extra. So here's what we do as we learned before. Hold the Alt or Option and then draw. Now this is a little confusing. If we hold the Alt or Option, this turns into a minus. However, let's deselect that by pressing Ctrl or Command D. If you hold the Alt, yes, it does turn into a minus one when the selection is there. If there's no selection, it doesn't make any sense. So for example, there was a selection and then when you hold the Alt or Option, it turns into the negative patch tool, the negative selection patch tool. However, if you have no selection and you hold the Alt or Option, you can just work on it like a polygonal lasso tool. Same goes with the lasso tool. If you want to work on it and if you hold the Alt or Option or at any time, it turns into the polygonal lasso tool and then you release it and it's done. So that's how things work over here. So let's make a selection of this by holding Alt or Option. And by the way, you can use the selection tool to make a selection and then use the patch tool to move it as well. You can do that if you want to. So there are no limitations to this thing. So let's make a selection of this and then we can come back to the patch tool and then you can use the same selection and oops, what happened? The destination is selected. Make sure the source is selected and then move it this way. Let's try this area. Yeah, it didn't do a perfect job, but we can work on it one by one. So we can select this area again and just like this and work on separate areas and you get the idea. You get the hang of it. Okay, and that's how we do it. So for making straight selections, hold the Alt or Option. In this example, we will learn a very strategic way to use the patch tool along with the clone stamp tool to solve its demerits. Now, what is the demerit? Now, one of the biggest demerit of the patch tool is that it doesn't work well with things which are attached. For example, if you had to remove an island using the patch tool, it's surrounded by water. It would be very easy to do that. Just select the island and just replace it with water. However, if you have to remove something, a piece of land that is attached to a larger piece of land and you want to remove just that particular piece of land, but that's attached. If you try to remove it, that area will smear. Let me illustrate that for you. There was a noise. Just ignore that noise. Okay. So if we try to remove a branch from this. Now the branches are attached. Select the patch tool with the normal one. Let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now if you try to remove this branch, have a look. This area smudges and that's what I was talking about. Anything which is island-ish will be easier to remove with the patch tool but anything which is attached, it, it's nearly impossible. It will smear. However, you can do this by using the clone stamp tool and the patch tool together. Here's how. Let me illustrate that for you once again because that's very important to understand. So if there is something which is attached and you want to remove it using the patch tool, you won't be able to do that because it smears. Now, what if, and listen to this carefully, what if we just make the island, we are not removing it, we are not replacing it yet. What if we just make the island by using the clone stamp tool and then use the patch tool? How about that? Now, hold that for a second. Zoom in. Let's make the island using the clone stamp tool. Now, what the clone stamp tool does, it doesn't do any of the math, it's just calculation. It doesn't care about what area am I replacing it with. It doesn't try to match texture and color doesn't do anything, structure and all that stuff with the patch tool, anything. It's just a copy paste with the brush. That's what the clone stamp tool is. It's simply a copy paste. So select the clone stamp tool and we will take a sample from this particular area. Let's take a sample by holding the Alt or Option. Click on that particular area. Make sure the blend mode is normal, opacity and flow at 100 and sample current layer is fine. Let's just break it and create an island like that. Okay, now we have created an island. We need to make it a little sharper. Like that. Okay, the island is now created. How about using the patch tool now? Now if you use the patch tool like that, have a look at this. Gone. 
And you can use this in complex scenarios where things are attached. You can use the clone stamp tool to just separate stuff to create the island and then you can remove the island and replace the island using the patch tool. Again, let me illustrate that for you again. If this is distracting this piece of junk right over there, use the clone stamp tool to just make an island first. So let's sample this particular area, make an island, then use the patch tool and remove it just like that. Easy. Now, this is an easy example in complex scenarios as well, where you need to remove some hair, pieces of hair just coming out. And you want to use the patch tool. You have to use the clone stamp tool to first separate it and then use the patch tool to replace that particular area. Welcome to the final example. And in this example, we will learn one of the most important use of patch tool when it comes to portrait retouching. I think it's the most important when it comes to portrait retouching. All of the other techniques are important, but this is very important for portrait retouching. All right. So first of all, let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Okay. Let's zoom in. And then suppose you want to remove this line, the eye bags and stuff. So select the patch tool. Select this particular area. Easy. Replace it with this area, just like that. Now that is fine, but that's kind of too much. And if you look at it, if I press Ctrl or Command D, as you can see, it's looking very unnatural. If you try to work on this again and remove this, it's, it's very unnatural. It doesn't look perfect. So here's what to do. Instead of doing that, once you have made a selection, replace it with the particular area that you want to replace it with, release it. And before you hit Ctrl or Command D, and before you deselect that, go to Edit, Fade, patch selection. Select that and decrease the opacity. What it does is that it decreases the opacity of the replacement. Did you get that? So this is complete replacement of what we did. And this is the before, the complete before. And this opacity controls the opacity of the replacement. If I switch the opacity to 100%, move it to 100%, then the replacement shows up 100%. The opacity is 100%. As I begin to decrease the opacity, the opacity of just the replacement decreases, or in other simple terms, the transparency of the replacement increases. Okay, so let's decrease it a bit. We have to keep it natural. So if you want to maintain a naturality in your images, you can use this to hit OK and then press Ctrl or Command D. It's more natural, looks much better. Now you can work on this one just like that. Only if you have to use it, you can go to Edit, Fade, Patch, Selection. The shortcut to which is Shift, Ctrl, F. So let's press the shortcut, Shift, Ctrl, F. Command, Shift, F in a Mac. Okay, And then decrease the opacity and just work on it. Hit OK, Ctrl or Command D. Now let me show you one more quick and amazing tip. So for example, you're working on the left eye this time and you want to remove this. So we will just make a selection around it and replace it with probably this area. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to fade the selection by going to edit, fade path selection, and these lines are distracting, these marching ants, they look distracting to you. What you can do, you can press Ctrl or Command H. H for hat and then hide that and then work on this. See, it hides the line. It doesn't deselect that. It just hides it. Okay. And then you can work on it. It's much more better, right? So yeah, that's good. Let's take it a little bit to the left. Hit OK. And then if you press Ctrl or Command H again, H or how do you pronounce it? I don't know. Then press Ctrl or Command D and done. The selection is still there. Even when you're using the content aware patch, for example, uh, there's nothing to remove, but we'll pretend that we have to remove this. So we'll just go ahead and select this particular area. And suppose you are using the content aware. And in this case too, while you're selecting some area, for example, this particular area, and you selected that, and you need to work on the structure and the color, and you cannot see which one matches or not, you can actually press Ctrl or Command H again, and then work on this to see which one matches better. If that line was distracting you, one is not matching great. So we'll just increase the structure to two, probably three, see which one matches with your image and then work on it and go forward. Then press Ctrl or Command H again to bring that back in. Press Ctrl or Command D, deselect that. Okay, and that's how it's done.
And by the way, you can also directly press Ctrl or Command D if you can remember stuff. For example, if you made a selection like this and if you pressed Ctrl or Command H and you hide it and you want to deselect that, you don't have to bring it back by pressing Ctrl or Command H again and then press Ctrl or Command D. You can directly do it if you can remember that there is a selection. And that's all there is. So that's everything important that we need to know about the patch tool in Photoshop. Just a quick little recap. What is the patch tool? Well, patch tool is a tool to remove and replace stuff. Well, that's the fundamental and the basic use of the patch tool. However, you can also use the duplicate function to actually populate stuff, but that's secondary. But the fundamental and the basic function of the patch tool is to remove and replace stuff by using a selection. So you make a selection, drag it to the area that you want to replace it with, release it, Control or Command D. That area is replaced. One of the most important things that we need to remember about the patch tool is that always make sure that you line things up. In the second example, we had a look at it. So we made a selection around the bush and we moved it to other area. We made sure that the railings were lining up. So make sure things line up while you're using the patch tool. In case the normal patch is not working or in case you want to experiment, you want to customize stuff, you can use the content aware patch. And one of the advantages of the content aware patch is that it allows you to work on a blank layer by checking sample all layers. So you can create a blank layer and work on the content aware patch. Now, once you apply the content aware patch, there are two options, structure, and color. You can work on both of them separately to see which one works for you the most. On the top toolbar of the patch tool, there are two options, source and destination. What is source? Well, when you have source selected, you determine the source of the selected area. What does that mean? Well, for example, if you want to remove this mic from this image, you will simply make a selection around it and choose a source for this. For example, a part of my tracksuit. So you will select this area as a source to replace that particular area. When you have chosen destination and you want to remove the mic, you will choose this particular area and choose the destination for your selection. So you will choose the destination, which is this and place it here, that will cover the microphone. So in destination, you determine the destination of the selected area. In source, we determine the source of the selected area. When it comes to selections, there are a couple of tips which are important. Tip number one, hold the Alt or Option to make straight lines while making a selection. It actually makes it act like polygonal lasso tool. And then if you make the selection, once the selection is made, you can hold the Alt or Option to turn that selection into a negative selection and you can subtract areas from the selection. Similarly, if you hold the shift key, it adds to the selection. Then we learned one of the biggest demerits of the patch tool. And what is that? It doesn't work on objects which are attached. So any object which is attached to something, if you try to remove it using the patch tool, that area will smear. Also, any area which is islandish, which is surrounded by waters, for example, it will be easier to remove. And if you want to remove a piece of land attached to a larger piece of land, it would be very difficult with the patch tool. So how do we do it? By taking clone stamp tool into action. So using the clone stamp tool, we make the thing islandish, we separate it first, and then using the patch tool, we replace it. Last but not the least, if you want to bring back some naturality into your portrait while removing those wrinkles and eye bags, you can use the fade patch selection option. So once you make a selection, replace that particular area, it's a 100% replacement. You can go to edit fade patch selection that allows you to control the opacity of the replacement. And that's all there is for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful and if this was, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever by supporting us on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.